welcome to another episode of Wiki Reviews. Last week we dealt with alien invaders from the stars. This week we're going to deal with a different kind of invader. The demon kind. So join me in the reviewing of The Warded Man by Peter V. Brett. So we go from space fights and aliens invading to the fantasy world of Thesa, where demons haunt the night and kill and frighten people from going out in the dark. Um, the Warded Man is the first in a trilogy by Peter V. Brett. Uh, his next two books in the series are The Desert Spear and The Daylight War. Um, but I haven't read those yet, so we're just going to talk about The Warded Man. Um, so... The basic overall story of The Warded Man is actually about three people, um, Arlen, Leisha, and Roger, uh, who have all survived attacks by these demons in this universe. Um, then the demons are called Corlings because they come from the core, which is their world. The, Corling, the core is the world of the Corlings. Um, and they can only come out at night, but they are powerful magic demons that can that basically the humans have no chance against uh they have but but humans have found a way to protect themselves through these things called wards which are magic symbols that create nets of magic that protect them that the demons can't get through um, that the corelings can't get through um unless uh the wards are moved out of a specific place they are scratched dirtied uh if mud gets on them then they stop working so it's very <laughs> very nerve-wracking um so the worded man starts off with arlen uh in his world in his old home tibbets brook uh i'm not gonna remember the names where everyone is or where they go because there's a lot of places to remember so the ones i remember i'll, I'll be sure to say but i can't promise i'll remember all of them but tibbets brook is where Arlen is from, and he lives with his mother and his father, and, um, he, he finds a strange fascination with the Corlings, he, they, they still terrify him, he's a child when we meet him, they're all, they, they, this takes place over decades, of, or years and years and years, uh, we meet all of them when they're really young, but Arlen is afraid of the, of the Corlings, but he, um, he finds a strange fascination with them. Like, he he likes watching them fight against the wards. He's a natural at ward writing. Like, he picks up wards really quickly. He has one of the steadiest hands to actually draw wards. Because if you don't draw them perfectly, then they won't work. And he actually has a natural talent for warding. He can actually see how wards interconnect. How they make these nets of magic that stop the demons from... The Corlings! I will get it right! The Corlings from attack, from breaking through. He can actually see it when the magic is sparked. and Because when the Corlings hit it, the magic lights up and it shows this net of magic that is created. Um, Arlen's story basically goes, uh, there's an attack on his village, um, and they go to help anybody, anybody anyone they can find. Uh, he meets Reagan who is a messenger, and in this world, messengers are the men and women who, well, the men, mainly the men, who risk their lives traveling from cities to these holes called hamlets, uh, in these small villages, transporting goods and services, letters, basically, they're the traders of, the, of this world, but they are also, they, they have to be very brave, because they go out and they travel and then they're out in the wilderness during the night when the Corlings spawn. So they usually travel with portable wards and they can they hide during the night or they hunker down in one spot and they stay in the wards during the night. But they're very brave men and women. They actually have weapons that don't kill... They have weapons that aren't fully effective against the demons. They're enough to like maybe wound them so they can escape. Um, and then some of the messengers travel with jonglers. Jonglers are kind of these um, clowns that travel with them. Uh, and they help raise the spirits of the people. And they also go because that way they can make an earning and make a living. They get a lot of money doing it because they are going to these dangerous places as well. And anyways, so 
this the village is attacked. Uh, Arlen meets this messenger, Reagan. Reagan kind of shows, talks to him, tells him about being a messenger, and Arlen kind of gets this desire to become a messenger. Uh, but when he goes back home, his father um, says that no, you can't. You're gonna stay here. You're gonna help with the farm and. You're gonna grow up and be like everyone else. Maybe you'll, maybe you can be a warder for the town eventually. Uh, but then the Corlings, because the Corlings come every night. Every night there are Corlings. So if you're not in by nightfall or behind wards by nightfall, you're pretty much dead. Um, and they realize some of the wards aren't fully binding. I guess is the word I'm looking for. Um, and they're trying to fix it. They are attacked by the Corlings. Arlen and his mother are separated from his father, but his mother is critically wounded by a Corling, and so he tries, and he, he is angry because when his mother is the one who runs out to, to save him from the Corlings, but his father stays behind and is too scared to leave the safety of the wards, so Arlen kind of loses faith in his father. He tries to find a way to save his mother. His father keeps getting in the way. Eventually, his mother dies, and he hates his father, and he runs away. Arlen runs away, and he finally catches up with the messenger, Reagan, and uh, Reagan agrees to take him back to his home, which is Fort Milne, which is far north of Tibbetts Brook. Um, and Arlen starts learning the ways of the messenger, and he starts learning uh, the w way of the wards, and he starts trying to discover all the wards he can, because people in Milne know wards that people in Tibbetts Brook don't know, people in Tibbetts Brook know wards that people in Milne don't know, and he starts realizing, like, why aren't we sharing these wards with each other? Like, we're all in this together to fight against these Corlings. Like, why are we keeping secrets from even each other? Um, and then he kind of grows up to be a messenger, he does messengering, uh, and he he learns more about the wards. He actually learns a little bit about the Corlings. His interest in, in his in, his interest in the Corlings and how there must be a way for us to fight back. Because in the olden days, it says in the books, people used to fight back, and they actually would win against the Corlings. They could do it, and there had to have been a way. There there are wards that are, exist somewhere that can actually fight the Corlings, and we need to find them and we so we can fight back and take back the night. And that's kind of Arlen's story, is him just kind of learning, discovering how humanity can fight back against the Corlings. And then we also are introduced to Leisha. Leisha is a girl from Harrow's Cutter? Hollow's Cutter? Cutter's Hollow. Cutter's Hollow! He's <laughs> See, I'm gonna try my best to get these names. Cutter's Hollow. Uh, she is very excited to have babies I'm not gonna go too much into that because I know with certain things happening in the world if I go off too much on a tangent on that if I go too off on a too much on a tangent on that people may have very strong opinions I'm just gonna say this it's annoying that all she wants to do is have babies, but I understand that this is the world that it is. In this world, women, because partly it's because the Corlings kill so many people that they're trying to breed fast enough to not go extinct, so I understand that. But also in this world, there's a strange idea where if a woman hasn't had a child, if a woman doesn't bear children, then she's kind of... Then she should be a. She's kind of not accepted, isn't the word, but it kind of is. It basically, the whole point is women in this world, if they don't have children, they're frowned upon. And that's all I'll say about that. So let's go on. Let's keep going with Leisha. Leisha, uh, again, there's been an attack in her village. They go to clean everything up. She's betrothed to, betrothed to a boy named Garrod who is the best looking boy in town, which is funny because Leisha's the best looking girl in town due to her mother, El Elena, who is the hottest mother in the village and is also a big bitch uh, because she only married Leisha's father, Ernie, because he had money. Uh, but Ernie is a sweetheart, he's a nice guy, but she only married him for the money and she cheats on him constantly. Uh, and again, I could go into that too, but I'm not gonna because I don't feel like starting flame wars anywhere because 
whatever it is what it is uh it's it it is what it is um and you can say it's because it's a time period, but it's a fantasy book, so time period shouldn't matter. But whatever, we're I'm, I'm getting over it. I'm over it. <sighs> See, I'm over it. Um, anyways, Garrod starts spreading rumors that he and Leisha have slept together, which is frowned upon unless you're married. Um, unless you're a man. When you're a man, it's fine. You, it's this, you know, woohoo, high five, good job, buddy. Uh, for the women, they're tainted. They're whores. They are unfit to wed, blah, 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 the stuff you hear all the time. Uh, so, to Leisha's credit, she gets really angry at him and decides, I'm not going to marry you anymore because you're a liar. Uh, and during this, she also meets Bruna. Well, she knows Bruna. Bruna is the herb gatherer. Herb gatherers are kind of the uh, healers of this world, they are very important to villages and cities, they're important to the, to surviving the Corlings, they know the most about healing Corling attacks, uh, they're the doctors of the world, they can set bones, uh, heal illness, heal, heal illnesses, and do all that, um, so she meets Bruna, Bruna kind of sees something in this girl, um, cause Leisha helps her a little bit with he helping the injured, and Bruna kind of sees that she's very good at picking up quickly healing. Uh, so she invites Leisha to become her apprentice. And Leisha, Leisha agrees, much to her mother's disdain. Her mother just kind of wants her to get married and have babies. Um, but Leisha decides that she's going to move in with Bruna because she can't stand her mother anymore because she's a bitch. Um, and she becomes a herb gatherer and she's really good at it and she becomes kind of the best of the best and eventually she moves she's traded for another apprentice so that she can learn even more about herb gathering in another in another city uh angiers i believe is the one where she goes uh god there's so much to get through um but she also starts to learn that she still she she really only cares about helping people she really like, even people who are awful, she wants to help them. Healing people is her calling, but she also is interested in trying to find new ways to heal the corling wounds, because sometimes you get a poison from the corlings, from their venom, or from their blood, and it's... She, she is interested in learning more about them so that she can find ways of healing the injuries that they cause and also finding ways to fight them her in her own way instead of using swords and spears and arrows and all that she wants to find her own way to do it with chemicals because she can create powders that burn the eyes and that affects the corlings but they have such a heal fast healing she wants to find ways that they can really injure them and you know stop their maybe even stop their regeneration from happening uh then we also meet roger roger is our third person in the story. Uh, Roger survives a corling attack that kills his mother and also kind of, and I believe it's his two, last two fingers or three? It's two or three. Where he loses his fingers and a jongler who happened to be in the town when the attack happens uh, named Eric takes him in after his mother's dying words were please help him, save him. And so he raises Roger to be a jongler, but Roger has problems being a jongler because he's missing his finger, so he can't juggle, which is the key thing of being a jongler. <laughs> Jungle juggle. <laughs> um, but he finds his own means of entertaining people. He finds he can play, He can because his father was a musician, so he remembers his father playing the fiddle, so he when he picks up a fiddle, he can go into kind of this place where he can just play beautifully, and it so everyone loves it, and they pay him a lot of money to do it. And he discovers, uh, after a fight with another jong with a rogue jongler, uh, he and Eric discover they can't stay where they are, which is Angiers, by the way. Uh, he can't, they can't stay there. They go out to the hamlets to try to raise money, spread the work, spread their names around so that they can get back to, uh, a better place in the jongler ranks. Um, but unfortunately during their travels, Eric has a drinking problem. He gets drunk all the time, wastes all of their money on drinking. And one night when he's particularly drunk, he accidentally shoves Roger outside of their little warded circle and in a panic he 
saves Roger's life, losing his own, and Roger now has to survive on his own. And he's and he discovers that night that when he plays his fiddle, when he's playing beautiful music, the Corlings kind of watch. They're kind of in a trance, and they'll kind of watch and dance and when he's playing that. And then he also learns when he's playing really sharp, certain off-key notes, and he can actually keep them away, keep sending them back. Um, and it, it's so interesting, that. And then he... Oh, he also becomes well known for his stories. He's a big storyteller since he can't juggle and do certain tricks that jonglers are known for. He gets by with his music and with storytelling. And he starts spreading stories and of all the ones that he's heard and like and even creates some of his own and becomes very well known and popular for that. Um, what else can I talk about? I could talk about the warded man, but that would be a spoiler. So I'm not gonna. Um, so let's just go into the world of Thesa, I guess. Thesa's a beautiful world. Uh, it's made up of basically cities, hamlets, and villages. Yeah, and um, the the world there's the world. There are mountains. There's a big desert in the south. Uh, there's mining and the forests and swamps and all there's you know it's it's a it's a world it's an it's a planet i guess it's a, it's a country that has the normal things there's not a lot of humans left because of the coraling so there's not a lot of towns a lot of cities left um there are ruins of cities and ruins of the old world is kind of they call it where people where the humans used to be able to fight the corlings back and there was even a time where the corlings stopped coming from the core and humans kind of forgot about them and that's when the wards kind of were lost the fighting wards and then suddenly the corlings reappeared and attacked and killed millions billions of people and now it's the last remaining few kind of hanging in there. I, I make it sound like there's a there's really small numbers. I mean, there's a lot of people left, but I mean, compared to what there were, um, the mythos of this world is interesting. I kind of gave you a little bit of it, where the coral the coraling people fought the coralings. They disappeared for a while, but the basic thing was the coralings existed, killing people, and humans were afraid. But then the deliverer came and taught them how to fight and taught them the wards and how to protect themselves how to fight and they could kill the corlings and they fought them back and the corlings left and disappeared for hundreds of years hundreds of years uh the deliverer faded away into just story the wards that he brought that showed how to fought, fight the corlings disappeared faded away and when the corlings came back there was no way to to fight them, only the wards of protection kind of remained because they were left on buildings, they were left in books. So people, so humans were able to survive, but now they're on the brink of extinction. Uh, anyways, these three characters eventually do come together, but I, I, in their own ways, they kind of realize that their paths are all leading to the same point. They just want to find a way to, for man to fight back against the Corlings who have been, who've made man weak and terrified of the dark. Uh, so yeah, it's all, it's a very interesting mythos. It's, the demons themselves are interesting. Uh, there are different kinds. There's wood demons, rock, stone demons, sand demons, fire demons, wind demons. Uh, there's even a few demons that are painted on ancient walls that no one has seen that I feel are going to be popping up in the next couple books and that'll be exciting to see because they don't know what they are. Um, and the fear of the unknown is always fantastic in stories. Um, like there was even, there's even like great, there's humor in it. The, the dialogues are great. Uh, the only things I guess I have a problem with is just Leisha's character, and that I know I don't want to talk about it because it's gonna start people being jerks. <laughs> um, people, both sides of the spectrum, men and women, will both, yeah, whatever. 
Uh, but it's just her fact that she's such a strong woman when she's being the herb gatherer. Like, she can smack a man around. She'll, like, fight against men to, like, shut them up and all that. And, she, and like, Bruna kind of thought of that. Bruna was a really very tough old lady. Uh, but she always goes back to, I want to have babies. I want to be a mother. That's what I'm supposed to do. I just want to have a baby. And it's... I mean, there's one point where it's explained kind of well. Uh, one of the herb gatherers say, well, you know, you can't really help people with the, with specific problems about that if you haven't experienced it yourself. Wink, wink. Um, and that was interesting, and that made sense. But it was the whole fact that she always keeps going back to, I want to have a baby! And it was... And she's like, I have to eventually just settle down and just accept the next guy who's nice to me. And that's what bothers me. It's like, she's such a strong woman. It's like, no, no, you pick who you want to have a baby with. And he's going to be whoever you want to have a baby with. You don't have to settle for anyone. But I digress. Um, yeah, that was really the only thing that bothered me. was Leisha being a little, a little princess or whatever you want to call it. I don't care what you call it. It was just the fact that you can argue it's the world telling her you have to have babies because we're dying and the quarrelings and pfft. But my opinion is, it's just... <sighs> Not gonna say it. No, I am gonna say it. It's just, it's a, it's a man writing a female character in a world, in a fantasy world, where they feel that that's all a girl would want in that world, and they say, oh, it's a time period thing. It's like, it's not a time period thing. It's the fact that you, it adds that sexual tension that doesn't have to be there. There doesn't have to be sexual tension between certain characters. Like, there are moments where, like, is she gonna get with this guy? Is she not gonna get with this guy? Is she gonna let him have his way, or is she gonna fight back? Uh, like, you don't need that awkward sexual tension there. It's like, she can just be a strong woman, and maybe she'll want a baby. She doesn't have to be, like, strong woman, strong woman, strong woman, like, oh, I want a baby! <laughs> Anyways. Uh... <sighs> Yeah. So that's the warded man, kind of. That's the characters, at least, which are basically the story. The story is all about these three characters and how they try to find ways to fight against the Corlings and survive against these Corlings and trying to find a way to fight back and get humanity back on top. Um, and I like, like I said, I liked the mythos. There's a lot of work that has been gone into this uh, book about the mythos behind everything. Uh, about why humanity has gotten to this point, uh, and there's that little bit of hope left that maybe the deliverer will c the deliverer will come back, or maybe we'll find the wards that will be help us fight the demons back, and that that's great, and it was wonderful because I was right there with them, like maybe you will, maybe we will be able to fight the Gorlings back. Um, the mythos was great. The locate the the villages I I liked like there was there wasn't a point where I was like oh now we're back here uh, um, characters were fine except for Alicia's little baby problem uh, I don't know what else to talk about because I don't want to spoil things spoil things um. Overall, really good book. I'm excited to read the second one. I, I can't wait to see where this goes, because the ending kind of left on a bit of a cliffhanger, and I'm excited to see... Because it left on a cliffhanger that you know. Like, you know what it is, but you are... But it's what's going to happen when it reaches our heroes, I guess. Is the, like, uh, I'm excited. I'm just excited to read the second one. And I will be reading the second one, but I have a few other things to read before that. Um... So yeah, that was The Warded Man by Peter Brett. Um, my score for it is going to be a 9 out of 10. Ugh, Alicia just took that point right off. Uh, 9 out of 10 for The Warded Man. Um, I don't know what I'll be reviewing next because I have a few books. Like I said, I have a few books in queue, in line. Uh, but I'm excited. I hope you're excited to tune back in to see what I review next. So thank you for joining me on Wiggy Reviews, and I will see you next time. Bye!